one of the biggest challenges I see is that there is an increasing desire to consolidate risk by institutions who are now leaning towards um, project delivery typologies that are biased towards uh, building first and thinking about design second because it minimizes risk and the desire, say, to put the designer uh, under contract, say, to the contractor is something that many institutions uh -huh. are looking at as a, really? a way to mitigate their risk and consolidate their obligations of communication. I do think that there can be some fantastic outcomes from this if you've got the right client and the right contractor, but the diminishment of the appreciation of the benefit that design offers, uh, I think is a little bit of a risk as people become fearful about their resources. So that's one. I think the other is that um, the enormous uh, ventilation of media that are showing, you know, one extraordinary vision after another um, has created almost a numbing of, if you will, what's excellent and what's interesting because there's so much of it around us. And so I think that sometimes the focus and concentration um, that we all need to bring to our work so that we don't repeat the things that are in our peripheral uh, view, uh, that the level of distraction is greater than ever. So I, I would say those are, you know, from distraction with one turn of the dial, it can also be incredible stimulation. And then from uh, kind of consolidated or minimized risk agendas, there could be maybe new solutions that have yet to be considered that can, um, in a sense, keep aspirations high while mitigating risk. So those are two very, very different answers mm -hmm. to the same question. Uh, and yet, uh, I think those, those are a couple of things that are at stake. I think a third thing that's at stake is that we all have to think about our environment and, you know, architecture and building take up an awful lot of carbon, our carbon footprint. Yeah. And so I do think that we really have to think about um, our lease of what's there, um, how and what we build and uh, the disposability of so much of the architecture that has only a 25 year aspiration as opposed to the 50 and 100 year that uh, you could say we really need to be thinking about these are all I yeah. think uh, sort of in the kind of climate of where we are right now we need to we need to really address seriously so the second point though so the the concern so the second point was um you know the the proliferation of of fancy architecture or whatever you call it you know through the media um the concern is that uh, designers become overly influenced by these things in essence and there's a bit of uh, copying or being over influenced by them I, I think it's less copying and being over influenced by it. I, I think it's the 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 sense that everything needs to be a particular kind of handstand if you will oh, um, right and and there are signatures that each era has of what that handstand looks like mm -hmm. and if you say look back 10 years ago you could say it was a parametric signature <laughs> right you could argue that it's a different one right now the parametric uh, signature did not last long. Those guys <laughs> thought it was going to be around. It was like the next 500 years. It's the future of civilization fizzled out within 10 years. Technology evolved too fast. Oh. A little bit of a parametric storm. Uh, <laughs> that, oh. What it did, though, is it offered a kind of agency to many, many other ways of working. Yeah. And so when it became integrated, more normative, it, it, it offered up some fantastic things. So, you know, I think it's really just... You know, at, at least as I find in, you know, in teaching, there is a tendency to, uh, you know, borrow without insight mm -hmm. as opposed to, say, learning from a case study where there's great insight uh, through the study of something. And uh, a design studio that I've been teaching for a while really draws on, you know, interrogating these hybrid case studies, such as, say, the Kaju Bridge in Isfahan that nobody looks at and yet we think has triple agency. Mm -hmm. uh, and by analyzing it, you can draw from something as opposed to simply copying the image of something. Yep. I think that's my biggest critique of the media around architecture is that it doesn't really dive into the architecture mm -hmm. and, and the message and the, and the process and what it's trying to accomplish. And it's really just this kind of superficial publicity well, of architecture. You know, it's, it's you click, know? you need clicks. The media, they need, yeah. they, they're, they're, <laughs> that's the problem is that their financial structure is based on how many clicks they get. Mm -hmm.